Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 223 of our Bible study review. Today, we're going through the Psalms 108 through 110. As you open up Psalm 108 and you read it, and you may have this feeling of deja vu, like this looks familiar. I think I've read this before. You have. It's a mixture of two different Psalms put together as a new Psalm. We see that David is really, truly playing a remix DJ over here. So if you want to know the two psalms in which this new psalm comes from, it's Psalm 57 verses 7 through 11 and Psalm 60 verses 5 through 12. This is just the remix. The psalms are songs. They are meant to be sung with instruments, right? And so that's what this is. It's just truly a remix. Psalm 109 is a psalm of David and he is crying out to Elohim for deliverance from his enemies. Let's read through a good portion of it. Let's start in verse 1. It says, Do not be silent, O Elohim of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceiver have opened against me. They have spoken against me with a false tongue. They have surrounded me with words of hatred, and they attack me without cause. In return for my love, they accuse me. Now, this word accuse comes from the great accuser, which is Satan, right? Ha Satan, who is the accuser of the brethren. He says, while I am in prayer and they repay me evil for good and hatred for my love. That is truly satanic when people do that. When they call evil good and good evil and they pay you for hatred for the love that you have given them, they are truly of the synagogue of Satan. Let's pick up in verse six. So David says for his accusers, he says, appoint over him one who is wicked and let an accuser stand at his right hand. So one of the judgments of Yahuwah was to set a leader over a nation who was stupid, who did not have wise counsel, or one who was wicked as a punishment. And so that's what David is asking for those who are persecuting him without cause. He says, set over him a leader who is wicked. Set over him one who is at his right hand, who accuses people without cause. He says, what they have done to me, allow it to happen to them. Let's pick up in verse seven. It says, when he is judged, let him be found wicked and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few. Let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless and let his wife be a widow. Down to verse 14. Let the wickedness of his fathers be remembered before Yahuwah. And now I'm going down in the middle of verse 15. It says, and let him cut off their remembrance from the earth because he did not remember to show kindness but he persecuted the poor and the needy man and the brokenhearted to put to death. He also loved cursing, so let it come to him. And he did not delight in blessings, so let it be far from him. He's saying everything that this wicked person, the accuser that is accusing me, he says, let his seed, let the harvest of his own seed fall on his own head. Verse 18, it says, and he put cursing on as with a garment. And so he's so wicked. It's like cursing is his clothing. And he says, therefore, let it enter into his inward parts like water and like oil into his own bones. Let it be to him like a cloak he wraps around him and as a girdle that he always girds on. This is the reward of my accusers from Yahuwah and to those speaking evil against my being. But you, O Yahuwah Adonai, deal with me for your name's sake because of your kindness. It is good. And he says, deliver me. I just want to take the time to address this garment of wickedness because that's what the flesh is. That's why we have to die to it and live by the spirit. We've seen in previous Psalms that Yahuwah is described as one who has pure light as his garment. And that's the very presence that lives on the inside of us. And that's why we have these illustrations to put on the helmet of salvation, right? To put on the mind of Christ and the breastplate of righteousness and then the belt of truth and the sword of the spirit, which is the word. These things are to be like our armor, our clothing, because that is his righteousness. So when we clothe ourselves in his righteousness, then more light shines through 
our lives. So I want you to see that those who practice wickedness and those who have bitterness in their heart, and that's what they exercise, it's like a garment. It is making their flesh pass away even quicker. Let's pick up in verse 26. It says, Help me, O Yahuwah, my Elohim. Save me according to your kindness, and let them know that this is by your hand. You, Yahuwah, you have done it. Let them curse, but you bless. They shall arise, but they will be ashamed. And let your servant rejoice. Let my accusers put on shame and be wrapped in their own confusion as in a cloak. I greatly thank Yahuwah with my mouth, and I praise him in the midst of the throng, for he stands at the right hand of the poor to save from those judging his being. We see that King David is asking Yahuwah to act as the righteous judge, right? To weigh works in the balance because David is pleading his innocence in this case that he has done no wrong. He has shown people love. He has shown them kindness and they have paid him back for evil. So he is asking the great judge to hand down the gauntlet, basically. And we end today's chapter review with Psalm 110, which is one of my favorite psalms because it is completely and utterly prophetic. It is talking about our Messiah, who is the Melchizedek. He is the high priest and the conquering king who is everlasting. Let's read of this beautiful psalm. It says, Yahuwah said to Adonai. Your Bible may say the Lord said to my Lord, right? But capital L-O-R-D is not the name of our Heavenly Father. We need to know that it is Yahuwah. Some people say Yahuwah. Some people say Yahweh or Yahovah. I don't have any issues with that. But the L-O-R-D was purposely put there instead of the name of our Father. So the proper way to read this is Yahuwah. The Father said to Adoni, right? Which means Lord, who is our Messiah. He says, sit at my right hand. We know right now that's where our Messiah is seated. He says, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. I just want to pause here and I want to take you to Matthew chapter 22. Let's go there really quick. If you want to follow along, it's Matthew chapter 22 verses 41 through 45. Our Messiah is speaking directly about this psalm that is written of him. So let's read. It says, And when the Pharisees were gathered together, Yeshua asked them, saying, What do you think concerning Hamashiach, which means the Messiah, the Anointed One, or Christ? Okay, it says, Whose son is he? They said to him, Of David. He said to them, Then how does David in the Spirit call him Adonai, right? Or Adoni, which means Lord, saying, Yahuwah said to Adoni or Adonai, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. If then David calls him Adoni or Adonai, which means Lord, how is he his son? And if you continue reading, you will see that the Pharisees had no answer for Yeshua. They had no idea how to answer him. And so this was directly about him and still is. It says, let's continue reading in verse 2 of Psalm 110, Yahuwah sends your mighty scepter out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people volunteer in the day of your might and the splendors of the holy mountain. From the womb, from the morning, you have the dew of your youth. Yahuwah has sworn and does not relent. You are Cohen forever, which means priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, with no beginning and no end, because he is from everlasting. Verse 5, let's pick it up. It says, Yahuwah at your right hand shall smite sovereigns or kings in the day of his wrath. He judges among the nations. He shall fill with the dead bodies. Those who continue to rebel up until the very end, their bodies will be food for the birds of the air and the beast of the field. It says, he shall crush the head over the mighty earth. He's going to crush the kings and the sovereigns. Those who think they're running things, he's going to crush them down to nothing. And it says, he drinks of the stream by the wayside. Therefore, he lifts up his head. We know that when our Messiah was put to death, he was put to death as if he was one of the worst 
criminals, yet he was innocent. And when he took his last breath, his head was hanging low. Now we know that our Messiah has raised from the dead, but when he comes back, it's as though he has been refreshed by the Father, right? being refreshed by drinking water, and now his head will be lifted high. Those who spoke low about him, those who mocked him during that time, they're going to regret it because he's coming in full glory with his head high, and he is taking down everybody who is against him, and everyone will bow their knee, and every tongue will wag. Jesus is Lord, or Yeshua is Lord. They will have to. They won't have a choice. Their bodies will crumble. If the knees won't buckle, he'll make them buckle and they will have to confess the truth. Please feel free to check out the Bible commentary in the description box below just to get a better grasp and understanding of these Psalms. I also put a few videos down there of Psalm 110. The Psalms are songs and that's how they are meant to be heard in song Form. So I want you to see how there are three or four different videos of how Psalm 110 sounds. People make songs out of this and then they sing it unto him. And it is so important to remain in this constant state of gratitude and praising him because I'm telling you, that's the safe place and that's where he comes to dwell. He inhabits the praises of his people. So if you have an inclination in your heart to grab an instrument and try to make a song out of the Psalms, please do so. It brings him joy. Deep in Word family, that's all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.